Alan Middleton had to adjust some 4,000 historic clocks and watches at the British Horological Institute as British summer time comes to an end. One man has certainly earned his extra hour in bed this weekend. Alan Middleton spent two and a half hours adjusting 4,000 timepieces. He painstakingly turned back the time on the whopping collection of historic clocks and watches at the British Horological Institute, BHI, in Upton, Knotts. And while many clocks adjust themselves automatically these days, it is still up to curator Alan to wind the timepieces twice a year, to move them forward or back an hour. Sunday officially marks the end of British summer time meaning the evenings will get darker quicker. Alan said, it's certainly easier in the spring going forward than in the autumn going back. It generally takes me two hours and a half to check the clocks are correct. When the clock goes back it's rather more difficult as you should not turn the hands of a striking clock backward. You have to wind clocks forward, otherwise you risk damaging the mechanism. Or the simplest thing to do is stop the clock for an hour. This adds an extra an hour to the winding process. Going forward, it's a case of winding the hands forward, but in autumn you have to wind forward 11 hours or stop it for an hour, neither of which are particularly quick jobs. I'm fascinated by clocks. I like the sound of the mechanics working and the beauty of what's inside. I check the clocks once a week, Tuesday is my winding day. I'm English I like routines like that. Like queuing. But certain clocks have to be wound every day. The BHI was founded in 1858. In 1972 it relocated from its London home in Northampton Street, Clerkenwell, to Upton Hall in Nottinghamshire. The vast collection contains a pocket watch once belonging to polar explorer Captain Scott and the world's first speaking clock. The oldest part of the extraordinary group dates back to the 1640s. Here's everything you need to know about daylight saving. The UK reverts to Greenwich Mean Time at 2 a.m. on Sunday, October 26. That means all clocks revert back to 1 a.m. at that time. Good news if you're in a late night bar and fancy one more for the road. But remember to adjust your alarm clock accordingly if you're up for any reason on Sunday morning, or you'll be having an earlier than expected breakfast. The way to never get confused on this is to memorize the simple phrase spring forward, fall back. The clocks always go forward an hour on the last weekend in April in spring and go back on the final weekend of October in autumn, fall. The moving of the clocks was first introduced during World War I by Germany and Austria, and then by the Allies, to save on coal usage. It was invented by George Vincent Hudson, a New Zealand entomologist in 1895, while British businessman William Willett is also credited with the idea as a way of getting up earlier and so having more daylight hours after work. While the UK has always had daylight savings time since it was first introduced, it came into widespread use across the world during the 1970s because of the energy crisis. Does changing the time still have any benefits? Arguments still rage over the economic or health benefits it brings. Those in favor say it saves energy, reduces traffic accidents and crime, and is good for businesses too. Those against the change say it's not clear if any energy savings are made while there are also potential health risks. Children's health would be improved if clocks were moved forward an hour, according to new research. Researchers compared 23,000 children aged 5 to 16 in England, Australia, the US, Norway, Denmark, Estonia, Switzerland, Brazil, and the Portuguese island of Madeira. To test the effect of daylight on activity levels, the children wore electronic devices measuring body movement. The scientists found children's total daily activity levels were up to 20% higher on summer days when the sun set after 9 p.m. than on winter days when darkness fell. 